Oh, would you look at the time? Monday, 6 p.m. Another episode of Attempted Not to Get Sacked. You love to see it, although you might be watching this at a different time. You could be watching this at midday on a Wednesday, or you could be watching this on a Thursday evening. For the Arsenal fans out there, that's pretty easy for you because you do that week in, week out. In the last episode, we took on Hull City in our first game back in the Championship, and Peter Crouch scored the winner as we won by two goals to one away from home. And since then, it's been a pretty easy ride, I'm not going to lie. I mean, I did say we were going to piss this league, and that's exactly what we're doing right now. And as you can tell by our recent results, we've won four in a row, which means we are the only team in the Championship with a 100% record. I mean, I said this was going to be quite easy this year. In the game against QPR, Steve Mounier scored his first goal of the season with a header, which won us the game in the first half. And in recent weeks, Callum Hudson-Odoi has taken his place at the top of the top goalscorer rankings at the club by scoring at least four goals recently, including a winner against Brentford at home in the 3-2 win, and then scoring twice against Sheffield United away. And that does lead us into our two games against Charlton Athletic and Rotherham United in the Carabao Cup. And it's two games which I feel like we'll win. I mean, Charlton Athletic haven't even won a game yet this year. I think they've got one draw and they've lost the rest of their matches. Or from United, I mean, apparently they're in the championship. I didn't even believe them. We also do have my boyhood club, Portsmouth, in a few weeks' time. And I probably should have done an episode on them. I don't think I will do, but I will definitely pick them when we play them at home after we've won the league in January. Because the transfer window was still open after the whole game, we did have a few outgoings this week. And uh, Florent Haydage and I has gone to Norwich for five and a half million. He was my backup right back last year. It wasn't very good. I'm kind of glad I got rid of him. And also, it means that I don't have to pronounce his name anymore because it's bloody hard. Why couldn't he have an easy name like Bob Smith? Although, saying that, like the way I speak, it'll probably take me about 20 times until I say it right. Abdelhamid Sabiri has also left the club to join a German second division side Ingolstadt for 750k. Another player that I was not going to be using this year. I might as well make the money on him now. And finally, Rajiv Van Lepara has also left the club to join Zenit St. Petersburg on loan. And after I confirmed the transfer, I thought to myself, well, maybe he was actually a good player for this level and I probably should never have got rid of him because now he's gone from Championship to Europa League. How does that happen? I went to look at the scouting center to see if there was any players that I could pick up on the cheap and I was recommended this player from RB Leipzig in Germany called Mads Bidstrup. And I looked at him and I thought to myself, he does look like the sort of person that would say he my mom on Xbox Live. Get fucking good at the game, you little dickhead. On deadline day, I found out that we had the fifth highest wage budget in the league, which isn't good enough, obviously, because we want to be top of every table in this league. Although, I don't think we're going to be catching up with Stoke, and also because you'd have to pay me a lot of money to play for Stoke and live there as well. I mean, I've never been to the place. I'm sure it's a lovely place, but I wouldn't want to live there. Although this is coming from a bloke that lives in London and it has its own problems, really. In the press conference before the Brentford game, which won 3-2, Paul Clement was asked, is there any team in the league you consider to be promotion favourites? And he backed us. I mean, that's my sister manager there. Not that bell end we had last year. After those four wins that we got since the start of the season, I did beat the points target that the board had set me during the summer. Although they haven't offered me a new contract yet, and I'm worried now that this series is going to end very abruptly. And it also didn't help that I spent 34 and a half million during the transfer window. Shake, shake your money, mate. Good. So I really hope they don't sack me because the players that I've brought in are the players that can only play on the me. I mean, I hope they could play on the me. But we did go out and splash the cash on deadline day, sort of. Uh, we've brought in two strikers, the first of which is a Spanish striker from Real Madrid. And joining us on loan for the season is Raul de Thomas. And he played last season for Valladolid in La Liga and got 11 goals. So he should easily rinse this league. And also because we only had two strikers, so I had to bring in a few more options on deadline day. Joining us for his last ever appearance on Football Manager is Marvin Sordell, £400,000 from Burton Albion on a three-year deal. And, well, he's retired in real life now, so he won't be in any other edition of Football Manager from now on. So we might as well have signed him. 
And hopefully he's watching this series and hopefully he knows that I'm his favourite manager. And now we move into our first game of the episode at home to Charlton Athletic. Now, we have won four on the bounce. They're currently winless. We should make it five. Surely we should make it five. But there are only two changes in the side from the last game. Ben Gibson has been dropped for Khan Ayan to come in at centre-back in the defence. While in midfield, Alex Pritchard replaces Sergio Gomez in the number 10 role. And then finally, the strikers are still the same. Sordell is on the bench instead of Peter Crouch as well. I mean, Peter Crouch hasn't actually scored since the last episode, so I'm going to call it a tactical switch. I mean, Charlton are quite brave coming here to play a 4-4-2 when they're currently winless. I mean, did I tell you they're winless? I, I feel like I haven't mentioned that enough in this episode. The team talk was absolutely stupendous. That's all I'm going to say about it. There's nothing else to add. It's also nice to have an assistant manager who can also set up the tactical instructions. Although I did tell the team to tightly mark Lyle Taylor because he was definitely their danger man. We started off with the first highlight of the game and Alex Pritchard hit a free kick which just hit the top of the bar and went over. And talking of highlights, there were very few of them but Charlton did get one towards the end of the half. But Penny put a cross into the box for Lyle Taylor to hit. Lurse will say that Lyle Taylor put in the rebound. Although I did tell the team to tightly mark Lyle Taylor because he was definitely their danger man. I mean clearly the tactical instructions worked then. And amazingly on the series, we weren't drawing 0-0 at half time. I mean, I would take a nil-nil now, though. And Alex Pritchard started running the show in the midfield and uh, had a shot which was saved by Dylan Phillips. And then hudson Adoy had another shot which was also well saved by Dylan Phillips. I feel like we're not going to score today. And despite Alex Pritchard running the show in that number 10 role, I decided to sub him off for of Marvin Sordell. And when things were going desperate, I sent on Sergio Gomez to play in the number 10 role behind the two strikers. So we're essentially playing 4-1-5. And then Sergio Gomez got a free kick, which once again went over the bar. And then we lost 1-0. I mean, did I tell you they're winless? Why do I bother speaking sometimes? But anyway, enough crying about that trial result. We move into our next game against Rotherham United in the Carabao Cup. Now, this is a competition I don't care too much for because we are in the championship. So with that in mind, I have decided to field a second string side. And people say I don't care about the fans. Starting us off in goal for his debut on the series is Cole Darlow. And I'm expecting big things from him because he's my second choice goalkeeper who's just as good as my first choice goalkeeper. The back four sees a debut for Sam McQueen coming in at left back while Ben Gibson and Khan Ayan play centre back and Tommy Smith keeps his place at right back. And we've gone with four across the middle so Chris Brunn and Juninho Bakuna play on the wings while Sergio Gomez and Danny Williams play in the central midfield spots. And finally we start off with probably the greatest strike partnership ever seen on a Football Manager YouTube series with Marvin Sordell making his debut on the series alongside Peter Crouch who by the way still has only one goal this season. I mean, some people say the magic of the cup is dead, but when you get glamorized, such as Huddersfield versus Rotherham, you have to think, yes, it is dead. I mean, I'm not expecting much from this game, but we should comfortably beat Rotherham because they're battling relegation already. We're only five games into the season. But anyway, I wanted to talk to you about my future plans for this series. Now, I'm hoping to get Huddersfield back into the Premier League and then after two seasons, hopefully take them into Europe. And then after I take them into Europe, then get knocked out by some Finnish farmers in the qualifying round and then probably finish mid-table and then get sacked. Wait, hold on. The highlights are over already. There was not a single one that entire half. Brilliant. But it took 47 minutes for the first highlight of the game and Will Volks hit the post from a free kick for Rotherham. And then he was back at it again as a corner came in from the left-hand side and Will Volks headed it straight at Cole Darlow. It was time to make a tactical switch and Marvin Sordell wasn't really pulling his weight in the game so I subbed him off for Raul De Thomas to make his debut on the series. And also took off Peter Crouch for Brett Pittman to come into the number 10 role behind De Thomas. But whilst I was making the tactical change, we were on the attack and Danny Williams found Chris Brunt on the edge of the box and he turned and shot into the back of the net. An unstoppable shot on probably his weaker foot. I don't even know what foot he is. Is he left-footed? I've had him for a year and I still don't know what foot he is. But gave us the 1-0 lead. You'd love to see it. All the Chris Brunt fans out there are rejoicing. The Chris Brunt fan club has already doubled in size from 1-2. to two. However, with 10 minutes left, Rotherham got a free kick in a dangerous position and Taylor chipped it in the box of Ben White's head past my keeper. I'm not sure why I've said head because he actually volleyed it. So I'm not sure what I'm talking about. I mean, great defending by Huddersfield boys. I mean, what the hell do we do in training? Actually, I'm not going to answer that because I don't think I do the training. Well, there we go. All my weaknesses are being exposed now. And amazingly, of a game of this magnitude, no other highlights happened and we went straight to penalties. And that was my penalty taker list. I mean, forget Chris Lerver. He's not on the pitch. So it's Brett Pittman downwards. 
I mean, that's a pretty strong lineup for a penalty shootout. I mean, we should piss this completely. Rotherham were first to take a Michael Smith fired away to give them the lead. And then Brett Pittman stepped up and saw his penalty saved. Although you probably can't see it because I decided to pick this camera angle to do the penalty shootout from. Semi Ajayi was second up for Rotherham and then fired his penalty away. I mean, we're already in trouble as it is. But new loan sign in Raul De Thomas was second up for us and he put it away. So we're back in the game at least. Taylor stepped up for Rotherham and I needed Cole Darlow to save it, but he's an absolute useless sack of. It's alright because Chris Brunt was next up and he already scored already, so he just didn't bother scoring this penalty. And Rotherham stepped up to finally put the game to bed, but Cole Darlow decided, no, not today. We are staying in this penalty shootout until Karnaya and then missed the penalty and we lost the penalty shootout. Great. Four wins in a row and we've lost twice on this episode. What is the point? What is the point? One day I went to Lidu. I went to shoplift in Lidu. Then I got caught in Lidu. Now I don't go back to Lidu. One day I went to Asta. I went to shoplift in Asta. Then I got caught in Asta. Now I don't go back to Asta.